Crossover Thursday has arrived. Steelers Browns. Is it the last crossover Thursday of the season? We'll talk about that here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Chris Carter of Locked On Steelers. Joined by Jeff Lloyd of Locked On Browns. It's going to be a fun episode. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Crossover Thursday here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Chris Carter. He's Jeff Lloyd. I'm of Locked On Steelers. He's of Locked On Browns. And we're breaking everything down as the two teams head to face off in another regular season finale. This is not new to us, Jeff. We've done this, it feels like, almost every year for the past 30 years. The Steelers and Browns find a way to play play themselves at the end of the game. By the way, you can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. Like this video if you see it on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes, whether it's Steelers or Browns, and you'll be up to date all the time. And we want to, we want, always want to remind, remind you guys that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks because they always cross sponsor our crossover episodes. Prize Picks, of course, is daily fantasy made easy. Just pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to ten times your money on any entry. It literally takes less than sixty seconds to enter because it's that easy. We love Prize Picks. You know you will, you will too. First time you just receive a one hundred percent is deposit match up to one hundred dollars with promo code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N Locked On at PrizePicks.com. Jeff, how you doing, man? It's the new year, and these two teams find themselves duking it out at the, at the end of the season again. Um, yeah, probably a little different. I'd say probably the expectations and where both teams maybe are currently residing. I would say both maybe both fan bases a little disappointed. Um, I'm sure in the heart of both fan bases, um, they both want to win this week. You know, I mean, for the Browns, you know, hey, third place is better than fourth place. Same thing for Pittsburgh. Uh, for Pittsburgh to say it was a 9-8 and eight season and never break this Mike Tomlin streak of losing would be excellent for that franchise. Browns, the importance, and probably what is the biggest Cleveland Browns storyline to this point is Deshaun Watson. Um, Deshaun Watson wins on Sunday in his six-game run to Cleveland Browns as a starting quarterback. He'll be 4-2. and two. You're playing at 66.6% winning percentage. You know, you start to tell people that. People start to believe maybe in what your product is going to be 2023 when you have a full season of Deshaun Watson. Last week, first half against Washington, brought me back to the old line years ago, John McKay, coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. How did you feel about your offensive execution? I'm in favor of it. Well, that's what <laughs> I. That's exactly how I felt about the Browns' first half mm -hmm. last Sunday in Washington. But I think the thing you learned, and you know, when you go out and you make a move to get a quarterback of this ilk, is it doesn't have to be 60 minutes of perfection. It no. doesn't. It just, you know, if you can string together it quickly, like Deshaun Watson did, and I guess it was three touchdown passes in a game play time of maybe about 20 minutes of game play, those are things that can be the difference. Um, you know, I think some people, you know, feel the expectations haven't been met yet to this point. Um, 700 days is a long time away from a football field to go it's to a new lot. offense to yeah. go to all new personnel. It'd be one thing if you walk back into a room and you were playing with guys you always played with and you kind of have that unwritten language with each other and you have all that stuff down already. Uh, but for me, I, I've been thoroughly impressed. You know, I think the escapability in the pocket and breaking sacks right now, that I think is something that actually blows my mind because I would think that would have been one of the hardest things to basically get back. You know, just to I mean, you know, hasn't had a pass rushing near him in you know, almost two full years and all of a sudden mm -hmm. here he is you know getting out of plays junk and jiving um maybe a opportunity to use his legs a little bit more that is probably something that showed up in the christmas eve game um you know you hold the ball and you're, you know you're getting on you know four seconds you know there's only so much your receivers can do there's only so much your offensive lineman can do so you gotta gotta put something together yourself um scramble drills aren't working yet that's probably understandable there's just not enough of a rapport between the shots and deshaun watson and his receivers yet where that's working out uh, you have Nick Chubb banging on the door of 1,500 yards here. I'm sure the Brown would like to get that number for him as their franchise back, just continue to put out another great season. But Deshaun Watson, it, this is what it's all about. And if you say it's four and two, um, that's good enough for me. I mean, I don't need to argue statistics. I don't I don't care if Deshaun Watson statistically competes year in, year out with the top quarterbacks in the NFL. That doesn't bother me in one iota. And I don't care what they paid him. If the Browns are going to win games because Deshaun Watson's a quarterback, 
That's the only thing I care about. That's the only thing I care about, you know, as far as the money they gave them. Yeah, you know, me, you pay players to win games. That's what it comes down to. Um, so we've got to know Deshaun Watson here a little bit over, but this is a big one now. And obviously for good thing, good thing with Deshaun here is he's getting the first trip to Cincinnati out of the way this year. He's getting the first trip out of Pittsburgh out of the way this year. Because I'm sure, Mr. Carter, hmm. it will be a lovely and a very, very welcoming crowd in Pittsburgh on Sunday for Deshaun Watson. I mean, that's the thing. Steelers fans are going to be excited. There, you know, there was a time this year where people were like, "Yeah, what's the point?" You know, that this isn't. This, it doesn't look like a playoff team. You know, at one point, Kenny Pickett was getting injured, and you know, he wasn't able to play in some games. And then they were like, "Man, like this is this is looking like I was just a completely lost season." Like you were hoping, like no, no one was thinking the Steelers were going to be Super Bowl contenders. No, you know, the hope was that they could string together some wins, they could get to the end of the season, be competitive, and maybe fight for a playoff spot. And that looked bleak to not happening, but. Kenny Pickett has come in and uh, he hasn't dominated, but he's come through in some big moments for the Steelers. This is what all that they were looking for. And I think that's what sometimes gets lost in the conversations. You know, Deshaun Watson, you know, it's a different situation there when you're coming back from literally not playing football for more than two years and you're having to readjust yourselves. That's a different adjustment than what Kenny Pickett's doing for, you know, adjusting to the NFL as playing, you know, playing as a rookie uh, and everything that's going on there. And, these are two different trajectories, but I, also, I think that both franchise share in that they knew that there would be some adjustment periods this year and that they were and, and, and how they've handled them. The Steelers have put themselves in a position. Kenny Pickett's th- thrown had back to back, you know, fourth quarter comeback game winning drives. Um, he's had four this year where. Uh, where he's been able to, you know, finish the, you know, have game winning drives in the fourth quarter. Um, and that's kind of set a tone for like, you know what? It seems like he is figuring things out. He's not figuring everything out. He still has, you know, ways to go to become the, you know, the, the permanent franchise quarterback that everyone wants him to be and be the successor to Ben Roethlisberger and all that stuff. But for what you're asking for him to do as a rookie right now, he seems to be accomplishing that. He's not turning the ball over. He's made, he's giving his guys chances to make plays. And at the end of the games, when they need to turn it on, he's turned it on in the in the last two weeks. But can he do it against the Browns? That's gonna that's gonna be a big question. Um, and it'll be a big question, you know, with Deshaun Watson. If Deshaun Watson is able to put up some points like he did last week against the Commanders, you know, could Kenny Pickett answer him? Uh, you know, the, the Steelers this year. Uh, when you when you look at their their last several wins, they've won six of their last eight. But they but against the Saints, they scored twenty points against the. Colts 24, Falcons 19, uh, Panthers 24, uh, Raiders 13, Ravens 16. So none of those have been massive outputs from the Steelers offense. It's been more so the defense keeping a team in check and the offense either getting a lead early or pushing through at the last second. So I think it's going to be very interesting to see how each of these quarterbacks handle the situations on their new teams at the end of the season, because, you know, know, the Browns are out of the playoffs. The Steelers are hoping that they can have a chance at the the playoffs, but either way you're looking to end this season on a high note with the quarterback that you see carrying your franchise into the future. I think that's a great point. And this is where this game is so drastically different from when these teams first met on Thursday night football Mm -hmm. in week three. Um, you know, Kenny Pickett at the time, the Steelers just felt was not ready yet. Uh, obviously, the Browns were conti- going to continue to wait another eight games uh, to get Deshaun Watson in there. Um, you're seeing Pickett pick up momentum here the last couple of weeks, and nothing, nothing can help the confidence of a young quarterback than getting something done at the end of the game to lead your team to victory. There's there's no other recipe. You ask any coach, you talk to any NFL personnel guy, you know, what would you hope to make things easier for your young quarterback? Success late in games. It comes out of that's just that easy. Um, but the Browns, like, I'll, I'll go back to it. Look, playing four, if the possibility to play four and two football, you start to extrapolate that over X amount of games in an NFL season. And even with the Browns' tendencies, you know, on defense this year where there's been a lot of lapses, you know, that has started to pick up here. The Browns are now, they started the season with six linebackers. Though five of those six are on IR, gone. So now you're getting an inspired effort here with Deshaun Watson and from guys that weren't here in the beginning of the season. And that's what could make this game Interesting, you know, because obviously, you know, as we know, Jacoby Brissett is not going to be playing. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, Mr. Brisky is not going to be playing this week. Right. Um, so we'll see these guys battle it out. And, you know, for the two of them, their first time on a field against each other. And ideally, this is going to be a matchup, you know, between these two that's probably going to go on for, you know, a couple more seasons minimum. 
Absolutely. And of course, there's lots of other matchups that are going to be important on the field, not just the quarterbacks. We'll get to those in just a minute here on the Locked On Podcast Network on Crossover Thursday as we preview Steelers Browns regular season finale, 1 p.m. Acrisure Stadium. But first, before we do any of that. We got to talk to you guys about Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as your number one source for all your betting stats and sports information. You can get sports developments, league reviews, news, including sports podcasts, just like these ones that we're producing for you right now that break down all the betting news on the NFL, NBA, NHL, anything out there. Betting sports, Bet Online has. And Bet Online has you co- has, is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to your to your website, the website today, or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action when you visit Bet Online, where the game starts. Back here on Crossover Thursday, I'm Chris Carter. He's Jeff Lloyd, and we're doing Locked On Steelers, Locked On Browns, our second crossover of the season. Uh, the Browns came out victorious last time, and the Browns got to do a lot of the things that they like to do in that game. Uh, they were able to run the ball. They threw the ball. Uh, 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 Jacoby Brissett was able to get the ball to Amari Cooper. He had over 100 yards receiving. And, and Jeff, I, I think that's been a big factor for the Browns is how Amari Cooper has boosted this offense as its top receiver. Um, like a fish to water. I mean, this just went really, really, really smooth. Um, and obviously a little bit of a difficult spot. You know, Mari Cooper coming here from an explosive Cowboys offense, uh, coming in here. Uh, he got here before Deshaun. So basically he got to the Browns understanding I'm here. We have no idea who my quarterback is going to be yet. Um, and then finding out for the first 11 games, it was going to go be Jacoby Brissett. Um, and there were times where it hasn't gone that well yet with Deshaun and understandably so. Um, you know, minimal amount of time to Watson to work with starters before week three, the preseason, where the Browns basically pushed him to the background and said, look, this is Jacoby's team. You know, he's here for 11, you know, 11 games. We got to let him get, get him acclimated. But you get a half on Sunday. And obviously we talked about the struggles of that first half. Um, but in that second half, three catches for 105 yards. Um, you know, and you, you notice that the relationship is getting better. I think the one thing that's been a little difficult for some of these Browns players going from Jacoby to Deshaun is – Jacoby, for all he was, and he was good, Jacoby is just a slower general player. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you watch him play, it looks more like, you know, you're watching quarterbacks in the 80s and you're watching modern-day quarterbacks. Obviously, Deshaun Watson is the vice versa. And I'm sure it's been a long time since Amari Cooper caught a five-yard out and was able to turn up the sidelines and take it to the house. And that probably hasn't happened since his Alabama days. We don't see a lot of that in the NFL these days. Uh, then later in the game, after he hit Donovan Beatles Jones for a touchdown pass, you basically flood the deep safeties with everybody threatened vertically. You run the long drag route with Amari Cooper. Uh, you know, he gets the angle to the pylon. And you've just seen Amari step up here. And this all starting to come together. You know, Donovan Peoples-Jones had a pretty solid season. His numbers are down the last couple of weeks. But he's going to finish the season north at 800 yards minimum, mm-hmm. which is a nice, nice year three for a player like Donovan Peoples-Jones. David Ajoku was a big factor in that first game against um, – Pittsburgh, I think it was 9 for 89 that day in the score. Um, You're starting to see where David Njoku and maybe the money the Browns put towards him is making more sense with the mobility of Deshaun Watson. Once you get that run game going, it opens up the play action. It opens up the bootlegs. It opens up flooding one side of the field. And for a player like David Njoku, he seems to do very well on routes, basically where he is running, you know, left to right as opposed to, you know, north and south. So, you know, he's really, you know, come on in that era as well. So for me, you know, that has been something certainly to watch here. Um, But I do think, you know, the be-all, end-all here in the way it's always kind of seemed to be, Chris, between Browns and Steelers games, you know, for as long as the two of us have been covering this and doing this to each other. So we've been offensive line, defensive line play. Um, You know, Pittsburgh, obviously, you know, with their, you know, odd front that they play, they do mix in some even, obviously. It's a little something the Browns don't see all the time. So there is always, obviously, a little bit of adjustment there. Um, Brown's offensive line. We'll see if Jack Conklin's able to go this week. He's nursing a little bit of an ankle. Mm. Um, I, I, Brown's already have extended him and given him a contract extension. So there's nothing to worry about there. Jack Conklin is in the fold for the future here. Um, they do have a young guy in James Hudson that they would not mind getting a look at. If everybody remembers towards the end of last year, Mm. basically James Hudson started, I go ahead, kid, TJ Watt, you and him one-on-one. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um, but we'll see, you know, and he's been better than this year. So we'll see if the opportunity is there for him to play. But the key in these games, Chris, and, you know, as we both know is, is usually, you know, w- whichever side 
of you know whoever basically wins the trench wars, whether it's a combined effort between your offense and your defensive line, are usually the teams that turn out victorious in these games. Absolutely. And, and that, that's the way I look at it, because, you know, as much as, you know, we look at, you know, the how the passing game worked for the Browns, it feeds off of the run game. It starts with Nick Chubb, you know, the second leading rusher in the NFL right now um, and how, you know, once once he gets going, it makes it easier for the passing game to work. And even when Deshaun Watts is playing. And I, I think that was the big factor that the Steelers were able to cling on to last year when they when they played the Browns, um, they were able to they were able to keep the run game in check. Uh, in both contests, you know, the, the Browns didn't get over 100 yards combined uh, both times last year. And that kind of helped the Steelers kind of play at the pace that they need to play at. But, you know, earlier this year when they when they did when they played, the Browns did run the football effectively and, in fact, you know, ran for 171 yards on them. And that allowed the the Browns to kind of play at the pace. And then there's not there's not as much pressure on a Jacoby Brissett. And again, this isn't even Jacoby Brissett anymore. This is now Deshaun Watson. Um, so for me, like, you know, I know that people are going to. You know, talk about oh, the Steelers got to do everything they can to stop Deshaun Watson. But I, I think the Steelers need to take a similar approach to how they played the Raiders. When they played the Raiders, Josh Jacobs was eating everyone alive. He was, he's still the NFL's leading rusher with over 1,600 yards. Um, and then Derek Carr had Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro was back, Darren Waller was back. And the question was, who do you, who, who do you focus on with that, with that many weapons on an offense? And the Steelers made it clear what their plan was. Take away Josh Jacobs, secondary, double team Devontae Adams, everyone else, win your one on ones, pass rush, get home. And that was the plan all game long. They mixed up how they did it. You know, and make I asked Mika Fitzpatrick about that after the after them beating the Raiders. They said, Yeah, we were switching up our looks, but the whole plan was to find ways to make it hard for Devontae Adams to get loose. I think this is going to be a similar plan for the Steelers against the Browns. They're going to pro find ways to mix things up against Amari Cooper. They're going to focus on stocking, stopping Nick Chubb, and they're going to they're going to focus and they're going to you know trust their pass rush to get after Deshaun Watson, make his life a little a little bit harder, and they're going to trust their other matchups. They're going to trust their other corners and safeties to just limit David and Joku, limit Donald Peoples Jones, and that's going to be the, their hope on, on that side. Now, but on the offensive side, the Steelers are a different team as well. There, you know, it's not just TJ Watt being back on the defense that's helping them there on the offensive side the, the offensive line is playing at a much better rate they're run blocking better they're combinating off each other and it's helped Jalen Warren and Najee Harris as a one-two punch in the in the backfield lead the charge for the Steelers and you know similarly to how you know Nick Chubb makes it easier for a Jacoby Brissett or a Deshaun Watson. Those guys have made it easier for Kenny Pickett to say like, hey, you know what? I can come at come at you with a balanced look and I don't have to make all the throws all the time for the Steelers to move the football. And even though the Steelers aren't putting up points, they're possessing the football. Um, if you go back to when the Steelers played, play, played the Browns, uh, back, back back earlier in the season, they were next to last in time of possession in the, in the NFL. And they were they were terrible at possessing the football. Now they're fifth, and it's because they're running the ball, not turning the ball over as much, and they're finding ways to keep drives alive. And even if they don't get seven points out of them, they're making it so their defense doesn't have to live on the field at the way that they were in the first month and a half of the season. And I think that's a big difference here. So a big part of this will be can that Browns defensive front get after the Steelers? Can they make it hard on this on the on the Steelers offensive line? You know, you're you're, you're still going to have Miles Garrett, you're going to have Taven Bryan, you're going to have Jordan Elliott, Jadavian Kind. That crew, if they can wreck things and keep the Steelers offensive line from getting a push and allowing Najee Harris to to get loose, I think that's your biggest key to disrupting the entire Steelers flow of what they do right now. And that it's kind of been the focal point here the last two weeks. I mean, if you take Taysom Hill out of the equation on Christmas Eve, the Browns held all the Saints running backs under four yards per carry. The Commanders running backs last week, same thing, held them under four yards per carry. Uh, it's been an inspired effort here. Uh, Tony Fields, the only linebacker basically standing from the first initial 53. Deion Jones here from Atlanta, obviously an athletic guy who can run sideline to sideline. And I a surprise like here over the last couple of weeks has been Reggie Ragland. He was basically mm -hmm. out chilling in Vegas on the Raiders practice squad. Um, still a proficient linebacker in stopping the run. And look, there's roles for guys like that in the NFL. And the Browns ideally want to get to the position where they can get their nickel and dime on the field as fast as possible. So having a player like Reggie Ragland who can come in, be successful on first down, bring a little authority, bring a little umph. Um, obviously, it's not helping this team very much right now, but does bring a little bit of championship pedigree, champion pedigree to that locker room. Mm -hmm. um, you know, having played at Alabama, having played for Bill Belichick, having been with the Chiefs during Super Bowls, 
uh, it's nice to have it in there. And, you know, it's it's rare when you get you know this late in the year and you've lost so many guys that you can bring in a guy with that type of resume. But it might be one of the reasons that the Browns defense is looking better here over the last couple of weeks. I'm not saying it's saving any jobs by any means, um, but maybe it's saving some of the talent in that room for, for being here in 2023. No, I hear that. And, and again, when you get to the point where the Browns got to – where it was like, you know, this season, what you, what you, you didn't hold on the way you were hoping uh, while you were waiting for Deshaun. And when Deshaun came back, it took a little bit longer to get things going. You're, not, you're now at that point where like, okay, just focus on finishing strong, finding the guys that you know are going to be part of the formula when you wanted to put it together. And then that way you could hit the ground running in 2023. Um, I, I think the Steelers, even though they're still in the playoff picture here, and we'll get to that in a bit uh, in the final segment, that's been the focus all along. I think the Steelers have been looking at who, you know, when when they were two and six, all right, who's stepping up? You know, who's actually going to show up, you know, early early for workouts and practices? Who's going to focus on the game plan and, and find ways to win some of these games down the stretch? Because you're going to have, they're going to have to be some dog fights. And I think the Browns in a similar case, you look for those guys because you got guys that you signed to your long term deals, but you're also looking for those guys that are, you know, your vets that you brought in on kind of like fly by contracts where it's like, hey, if you're great, we'll keep you. If not, Oh well, we spent like a few million on you here for for a year, and the same thing for young guys that are looking to earn their future paychecks. It's it's about finding those guys, and I think that in the trenches, there's a lot of linemen, a lot of linebackers, running backs, and even some safeties and guys that are c- going to come down and help those guys. I think this is going to be a game where on either side you can earn some serious paychecks to stick stay with either team. We'll get to more about this about that, where both of these teams are. I think it's time it's good to take a global view at Steelers Browns right now and the rest of the AFC North and how it's played out this year. Now that it's week 18 and this is the last game, week of the season, we'll talk about where both of these teams are and where everything we see being in the AFC and the AFC North. But first, before we do any of that, we got to talk to you guys about Built Bar and if you're looking for a delicious treat, treat you don't but you don't want all of the fat and the calories this is why you've got to try Built Bar. With the holidays over, everyone's going to be trying to eat healthier and meet their New Year's resolutions. But if you still want to t- t- something tasty to eat, this is why Built Bar becomes your best option. It's healthy, it's tasty, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. They come in so many flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond, and so many more. And all of these flavors pa- only pack 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and fit 17 grams of protein into each bar. It's amazing. And you don't have to wait around to get a box anymore. For years, we've talked about Built Bar and how you can go to Built.com and order them to be delivered right to your house. But now you can go to just your local Walmart or your local Sam's Club and pick up a box there. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today and you can walk into the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. Or if you're close to a Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with flavors like brownie batter and churro trust me when you try built bars you'll thank me later go to built bars and find the best protein bars available out there Back here on Crossover Thursday Chris Carter Jeff Lloyd locked on Steelers locked on Browns breaking things down here for you Jeff, let's take a step back from the matchups and, and everything right now because it is interesting to see where these two teams are where, compared to where people were hoping that they they would be. Uh, Steelers eight and eight, Browns seven and nine. Uh, if the Browns win, they get to be third place. They're they're not in the playoffs, but still, it's you got a chance to end your division rivals' playoff dreams. Uh, and to give Mike Tomlin his first ever losing season in sixteen years of coaching, um, and. and also to give yourself, you know, some sort of like, hey, we finished with, you know, the season on a win streak. And that's 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 nice to carry on the Steelers side. You got a chance to keep the the, the non losing uh, season streak record going, get to the playoffs for a second year for a third year in a row, excuse me. Um, and also, you know, kind of put, put, you know, put a, you know, put a thorn in the, in the Brown side on, on your way there. Now for the Steelers, they also need help. They need the, uh, the New York Jets to beat the Miami Dolphins, which, you know, at, for a while, I wasn't sure what was going to happen with the way that the quarterback room was looking for the Jets, but the Dolphins are dealing with some quarterback problems themselves. So maybe that's going to be a little bit more even keel. Uh, the Bills, we don't know what the situation is 
uh, going to be there with the way that they're, you know, with their game with the Bengals being suspended. We hope the best for DeMar Hamlin as a Pittsburgh kid. We've done a lot of talking about him here in this city um, and we're a lot of praying for him to come through. But the Bills game against the Patriots is going to be just as important. If the Bills beat the Patriots and the Jets beat the Dolphins, it will come down to Steelers Browns to determine do the Steelers make the playoffs. And I think that adds a little bit of motivation for both sides. No question. Um, I, I don't think the Browns need any more motivation coming into this game. Um, just coming in here, knowing that they can get to four and two, uh, you know, salvaging maybe a tiny bit of their season by not finishing in last place here. Um, you know, you want, you know, it's Pittsburgh week. You know, it, 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 it doesn't matter what the record is. You know, these two teams enjoy basically going out there and, you know, getting it on, beating the daylights out of each other. Uh, it's always been the case. It always will be the case. You know, I know for you know a lot of Cleveland Browns in their fan base, you know, Pittsburgh Steelers, even though they are not as successful in the AFC North as they have been, you know, for a long, you know, as they were for a long, long time. There's a lot of people within the Cleveland fan base that basically use what you do against Pittsburgh Steelers as the measuring stick for this franchise. Uh, so, you know, going in there this week, you know, getting a solid effort, certainly, um, and most likely, hopefully coming out with a victory in this game would be key and would be crucial. And I do just want to say one thing, obviously, for all the Pittsburgh folks, um, Buffalo Bill folks, and again, even, you know, I, I will not stop to commend all the effort that was done by, mm -hmm. you know, the Cincinnati Bengals team, staff, the stadium workers, and the fans. Just amazing, obviously, you know, and it's a little bit tough to do our jobs this week because, you know, we never want to think about, you know, right. it's one thing to have to talk about a player getting injured. It's another thing to have to talk about that. Um, but, you know, obviously our thoughts, our prayers all, you know, with the Buffalo Bills organization, of course, you know, with the family of Jamar Hamlin. Absolutely. Um, and the family of Jamar Hamlin, uh, you know, we, you know, there's a lot of, been, a lot of the prayers. I think it's awesome that people raised over $6 million uh, for, for the charity that, or for the, for the GoFundMe, uh, charity effort that was originally just the goal was to get 2500 and that's one that demar's done for years uh you know i, I covered him when he was at Pitt. um you know he was uh he was very he's very nice then he was very nice as a central catholic guy uh that went to high school here um and uh and everyone's rooted for him uh since he since he you know since even when he joined the buffalo bills so um uh you know tragic situation there but but again Circling back to, to this matchup, I, I think it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, these were, again, the, the Browns, there was hope that the Browns with the getting of Deshaun Watson, even with the suspension that they would stay afloat. Yeah, you had Nick Chubb, you had Amari Cooper, Miles Garrett. This was going to be a year where everything kind of worked. And, you know, injuries play a factor into things. You know, the Steelers, they're 8-8 eight and eight right now, but if T.J. Watt doesn't get hurt early in the year, uh, you know, maybe they win two or three more games in that stretch where they started out two and six, you know, and maybe he's healthier down this stretch and it helps them maybe pull off another episode of the Bengals or the, or the Ravens. But either way, both teams have kind of found themselves here. And I, I think it's interesting with how the divisions played out. The Ravens look like they might have been the team to, to dominate this year injuries derailed their situation Lamar Jackson hasn't played he also didn't practice on Wednesday as they're about to play the Bengals the Bengals you know have emerged to to once again rise to the top of the division although only this year this isn't a a nine and eight team making the playoffs this is a team with 11 wins uh looking to finish strong on the season and has still has an outside chance at the one seat going going into the final weeks granted you know the buffalo the bills the bills bengals game still being something that's out there that's got to be figured out but i think it's been an interesting shuffling of how the powers have been in the afc north uh, i think you kind of hit the nail on the head here you know for the browns for what jacoby Brissett did for his 11 games i think everybody if you had just watched the offensive side of the ball with jacoby Brissett, the quarterback you would figure the Browns were one game, two games, over 500 when Deshaun Watson came back. Obviously, it was the defense that let this team down. Um, you know, the coverage gaffes, just, you know, issues all around the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, with a defense coordinator now finishing his third year, you know, in 2020, he was better with less. In 2021, it started really slow. It ended great. 2022, it started really slow. It's going to end maybe middle of the road, probably not enough to get it done, but these are things that held this franchise back. And, you know, ideally they what were hoping for the position that they maybe would be one game under 500 or even possibly above 500. Deshaun Watson comes back. They're sitting at four and seven. Uh, it became a bigger mountain to climb, so to speak here. Um, but again, the key for them would be to, if they can close it out at four and two here with Deshaun Watson and understanding that we've maybe for the most part seen a shell 
of Deshaun Watson, uh, you know, the quarterback that we saw all those years in Houston. You know, the Browns will gladly, gladly, you know, be very, very thrilled and excited for the prospects of 2023. Chris, we got to do it. They're going to make us do it. I mean, it's A number one is week 18. It's the second Browns Steelers crossover of the year. I guess we got to toss out some predictions, but let's toss out some predictions. What's your, what's your pick? I, I think this game is probably going to, should be, and just using the, the first game and seeing the layout of it, what I think it was like 31 20, something like that here. Mm -hmm. uh, you think both teams. Probably gonna be able to put a little bit more points on the board. You know, you expected Deshaun Watson team should be able to score a little more points. You would think with where Kenny Pickett is at right now, maybe a little more points. So you know, I'll take a 33-27. I've been calling for a Deshaun Watson big game. I haven't gotten the big game yet. I got the big half. Um, perhaps this is this is the week. And honestly, for the Browns, that would be the best possible th outcome. Would be is you know. They finish in third place. They find a way to salvage themselves to eight and nine. They are four and two under Deshaun Watson. He finishes out, closes strong, which maybe could be three consecutive halves here. And then all eyes are on 2023, and you know, they can get to work at what they got to do. And you know, it makes those free agent talks with prospective free agents a lot easier to sell when you say, hey, look, yeah, we know we only played six games. We went four and two with them. You know, and obviously it just becomes a much more likable product to commit to. I hear that. I hear that. And I, I do think this is going to be interesting to see how these teams clash this time around. Um, you know, the Steelers you were, you know, kind of let the game get out of hand a little bit. And again, they were letting they, they were letting the, the the Browns to keep having more and more possessions. It it kind of let the game get away from uh the pace that they wanted to play. The Steelers very much this year have been all about uh, you know, possessing the football when they've been in their best games. But if you go back to that game, uh the Steelers came out four and out, you know, punt, five, five plays, missed a field goal. Uh, and then that's when the scoring kind of went nuts. And then in the second half, they had three, they had, they had four straight punts, three, three of those were three and outs. Uh, and then only a field goal and a fumble to show in the second half, the Steelers in that game, you know, had about 10 different possessions. They want to shorten that up. If you go back and you look at how they beat the Ravens uh, uh, this this past week, you know, that was, you know, they were they were down to more like seven or eight possessions. And some of those were just at the end of the game because they had to. I, I think this is a game where there's scoring, but I don't think there's, uh, it's high scoring. I think there's field goals. I think that there's a lot more, I think the pace is more of a slugfest, uh, a lot of defensive plays. Uh, I think the that both teams move the ball, but then start to struggle when they get to the red zone. Um, and then it'll be defined by who takes advantage of those moments and who makes the fewest mistakes there. Um, I'm going, I'm going to go 1913 Steelers. It's an odd score, but we've seen a lot of odd scores lately uh, with the, with the amount of field goals and mixed extra points, <laughs> blocked, blocked extra points or, uh, or anything along those sorts. I just, I think that this is a game where the Steelers, you know, continue to control the pace. And the big thing for me is that the Browns haven't found a definitive way to consistently stop the run. Uh, the Steelers have gotten a lot better at stopping the run uh, th this season. And they've been able to show that throughout the, throughout the year's play, but Najee Harris has really come into his own. The Ra Ravens had one of the best rushing defenses in the NFL and he ran right through him last week and I think that he you know last year that was a key factor in both the Steelers wins was him running the football I think they lean on him a bit more it takes away a lot of clock and a lot of opportunities and I think Deshaun Watson he, he starts to find something late but because of the less possessions it's gonna it's gonna kind of come too late and the Steelers are going to be able to just kind of hold the hold on to the ball let the clock run out and that's going to be how, how they win um so but I, I don't argue with the Browns having a chance to win this game because the Steelers, they the, the Steelers have a very narrow way of beating you. Like they don't the Steelers, if this game goes to 30 27, this is the Browns win. Like I they, they the Steelers are not built to win that way. The built the Steelers are built to win old school, you know, Bill Cower, Chuck Knoll, pound you and, and hope that and, and let the defense play and then let the quarterback just kind of make a couple plays here and there. If you force them out of that, the Steelers haven't won games that way this year. So that's where I think that it's very doable. It's just a question of who gets to play their pace of game when these two teams line up. I think all solid points, and I, I agree with you. And um, obviously, the Browns were able to do the same thing against the Ravens themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. You know, and I, all I keep seeing about is you know how great the Ravens' rush defense is, and it's like, well, a couple of matchups against their own division. <laughs> it, it wasn't that great in those weeks. 
Um, but you know, I definitely looking forward to it. It's, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. And one of the things I will forever ever say is I don't think anything in the world goes faster than the NFL season. Uh, the fact that we are sitting here in week 18 and uh, final regular season game for both teams, will either team see another game? Obviously we know one won't, there's a possibility one will, uh, it's just amazing, Chris, just absolutely amazing that, you know, basically we, you know, we start all this in September, you snap your fingers and here you are, here we are. Yeah, it's January. January. Yeah. It's crazy. The NFL season goes fast and we'll see, we'll, we'll see, we'll be here to see this weekend to see how things play out. Uh, because once this game's over, whether or not the season, it's, we're going to start over all this clock all over again. Once, once, you know, the playoffs play, play through and everything. And then we'll be talking about the, the, the combine, the draft, free agency, all that stuff. But it's still an amazing ride each and every time that we, that we get to cover it. I think it's, it's, I, I you know, we're, we're blessed to be able to cover the sport of football and, you know, to, to watch all these guys do what they do, what they do. I'll be on hand at Acrisure Stadium 1 p.m. covering what happens there. Uh, but both of us will have one more episode previewing this upcoming matchup. So stay tuned to Locked On Steelers and Locked On Browns to get your coverage every day of your team. Jeff, let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Uh, obviously, you know, Locked On Browns is available YouTube, everywhere we get your podcasts. Also, if you have the Roku app, Go ahead and search Lockdown Cleveland Sports. You'll get the Lockdown Browns podcast. You'll get the Lockdown Guardians podcast, Lockdown Cavaliers, and also my co-host G. Bush and all the other knuckleheads over at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Make sure you're following at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Absolutely. Check them out there. They do a lot of great stuff. And the Cleveland Sport, the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show is doing such great stuff, putting together all the things there for that city. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find me here on the Locked On Steelers podcast Monday through Friday with bonus episodes, just like you find Locked On Browns, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and especially YouTube. Like this video if you saw it on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Steelers or Browns information. You can also read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, where I cover Pitt Athletics. We have a lot of insight on Jamar Hamlin, the person. If you want to, learn more about Tamar Hamlin there's probably no better place because we talked to all of his high school coaches teammates pit, play, pit players coaches teammates all the all of those things a lot of insight into how great of a person he is and why so many people are pulling from for him for how great of a person he's been but you can also check out if you if you're interested in any of the pit prospects like Kalijah Kansi defensive tackles Rossi a Dennis linebacker we've been covering those guys all season long check out that there at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette or follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques we'll be each back on our own channels for Friday we'll see you then right here on the Locked On Podcast Network.